Hey guys, so next up in my live games, um, I'm playing a 60 minute game against a player who's rated 1120. And I'm going to go e4, e5 to start with. Let's keep things classical. Okay. Knight to f3. So I'm actually going to play knight to f6, I think. I'm going to play the uh, Petrov here and see what my opponent chooses to do. So my opponent's rated, like I say, 1120, was it? Okay, so I'm expecting that they are going to be quite a bit stronger than the sub-1000 players, obviously. And um, I'm hoping that they'll use their time well. They've got 60 minutes on the clock. It's a good, healthy amount of time. <clears throat> okay, d4. So that's putting pressure on my e5 pawn, and I have two attackers against that and only one defender. I can choose to take and attack this knight here, which will probably prompt this knight to recapture. Obviously, the queen won't recapture. Then if I capture with my knight, the queen's going to come out into the board. How do we think about that? It's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> One option here when you've got four, the four knights out on the board is to go for the Halloween gambit. But I don't know if that's possible with 4d4. Uh, so the Halloween gambit is um, capturing on e4, prompting the knight to capture, and then you go chasing these knights around using your pawns. So let's have a think. I capture, capture, f5. This knight's now under attack quite often goes back to here. No, I don't, I don't see any future for that. What I'm going to do... Should I pin that knight? I mean, that does potentially give up a pawn. Then if I recapture with my knight, his knight captures, I can put my queen... No. Um, Let's go ahead and pin the knight. I'm expecting my opponent to capture. I'll then recapture with the knight. He'll then probably recap. No, I can't recapture with the knight because I lose my knight. This is one of those challenges, you know, when you play somebody. So, what's my current rating? 1390. Okay. So, I'm rated 270 points higher. The temptation when you are playing somebody who is lower rated than you is to. Try and be too fancy, try and be too smart, try and be too complex, try and win too quickly, and more than anything else is to try and be too aggressive, and to try and go for that jugular instead of <clears throat> making sure that you've got a, a solid game. So it, playing a weaker player very often tends to knock you out of your game. So uh, on the plus side, when you are the weaker player, playing somebody who has a much higher rating, sometimes that can actually make you freeze up a little bit and, and maybe play a bit more in a more tense way. It can make you suspicious about um, opportunities. You know, if, if your opponent blunders, you might think, oh, is this a trap, you know? Uh, so there's, there's pros and cons each way. Now, I'm not very happy with my situation already. I've put my knight in, in a position where um, it can be taken. So I'm, I'm losing tempo at the very least here. In fact, now I realize now I can capture on e4 because this knight on c3 is actually pinned. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm now in a position to castle kingside, which is not a bad thing. Um, we've got one pawn each, that's equal material. And also I noticed that I've got now two attackers on this pinned knight. Right, so if I were to go, for example, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, that comes with a fork on the king and the rook winning material. So I would be very surprised if um, white doesn't decide to reinforce this pin knight. So I'm, I'm expecting bishop to d2. Obviously, you can't play queen to d2. If he plays bishop to d2, I do have the option of capturing that. <clears throat> But I'm not forced to make a move if bishop d2. 
Bishop d2 means two attackers to two defenders on this knight. I might then choose to go ahead and castle. I might want to bring my, my rook or my queen onto e8 at some point. Particularly if my opponent hasn't castled in time. But we have lots of time on the board. It's important for me to focus on my game. Okay, this is an interesting one. All right, so the first thing I notice is knight takes knight and he can't recapture with a queen. So he's going to be forced to recapture with a pawn and that would give him doubled isolated pawns on the C file. It also removes my piece from this semi-open E file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It does mean that my when this pawn recaptures, I am going to have to do something with my bishop because I can't allow the pawn to take my bishop. Um, and I don't think there's a, a useful counter-attack. can't really kick his queen in the next move. I, mean, I can capture that, but then knight takes, so I'm just losing material that way. So, my bishop can come to c5. It's an undefended square. It can come to a5, which is defended by the knight. c5 is the better square. Okay, They've both got their ups and downs. If I come back to a5, then I'm looking at this pawn which is currently defended only by the queen. On the other hand, if I come to c5 and maybe then back to b6, I'm looking at the key square of f2. I could in theory also come back to e7, but that's a just it feels really slow. Okay, I think I'm going to come back here to c5 because I think there are more attacking possibilities that way. I don't see any immediate threats. He's got potentially bishop g5, attacking my queen, but I can block that with my bishop if I want to. I'd like to castle at some point soon. Oh, he's getting quite uh, <clears throat> frisky. All right, so let's have a think. First thought, b6 looks good. It defends the bishop from the queen. The knight is still defended by the d pawn. Okay, so b6 defends the bishop, keeps my bishop on this diagonal, which is where I want it, and also potentially has op opportunities to fianchetto my, my light square bishop on b7, where it will also be looking down at the king's side. So I'm, I'm certain that my opponent now is not going to castle long because that would just be ridiculous if he's putting his king you know, next to two semi-open files. He's got to try and castle kingside, which makes this, I think, a, a useful move. Um, if I do that and let's say this bishop comes out, are there any other threats? Is it, he's not thinking about this, surely. Could he be thinking about that? Knight comes in, threatening, queen takes f7, but then I can just castle. I think I'm all right, so I'm going to play b6. So potentially could move my bishop to a6. Let's say he castles, but is bishop b5 a threat? It's not a huge threat. I just want to get castle quickly, make sure my king is safe. The board is looking okay for black right now. I think that this is a significant weakness for white. Okay, so he's, he's thinking about just the, the bringing the queen in there supported by the bishop. He's also got now the option of bringing the knight in as well with a triple attack. So if I was to castle, put my rook there, he brings his knight in. He's not going to initiate the trade with his queen. This is the issue with having your queen at the front of the kind of exchange queue. So if he were to take with his knight, so let's say castle, knight comes in. Um, how about this as an option? No, I can't do that now because I've got to prevent the immediate checkmate. I do have maybe queen to there. Then if the knight moves, I've got queen takes e5 check. 
knight can't recapture if the knight's gone to there and I can then force an exchange of queen so that's that's an idea so let's say queen e7 yeah I think that's okay the queen's also defended by the bishop so these two are defending each other they've got each other's backs if he brings his knight in now I'm going to go in and grab the pawn force an exchange of queens and that kind of simplifi simplification, I think, would, would strengthen me at this point in the, t in the game. I like the fact that my opponent's coming out on, on, the, uh, on the offensive. Okay, this is interesting. So, first thought, f6. Try and kick the bishop away. This pawn cannot capture because it's pinned to the king. I have two attackers on e5 to his two defenders. I can't initiate that with the queen, it would have to be with the knight. Okay, so I'm thinking that f6 is the only reasonable move at this point. Pawn can't take. If bishop takes, bishop drops. And then he's still got, he's still facing a pawn on f6. If he does nothing, then I can capture the bishop because there's no checkmate, the queen can't go to g8, queen can't go to f7 because it's covered by two pieces so he would lose material that way I still also have thoughts maybe of knight takes e5 if knight takes, queen takes with a fork forces the queen exchange and I can always recapture with my pawn so I think we're okay <clears throat> Some good play so far, I think, by, by White. Let's remind myself this pawn can't capture. That's a pinned pawn. Maybe d6 could follow, putting extra pressure on that pawn, followed by bishop e6. No, that won't work because queen takes bishop. If I recapture, I'm a piece down. <coughs> Knight d8, followed by this sequence possibly. But first we'll see what my opponent does. I don't think he's going to capture there. I think that would be uh, an error because he's giving up a bishop for just one pawn. That would definitely put him at a disadvantage, a further disadvantage. He's already got these uh, doubled and isolated pawns to contend with. Queen can't come to g8, can't come to f7, can't come to e6. I'm pretty good. So let's say the bishop moves back to h4. Let's use my opponent's time to plan my ideas. I do have g5 to kick the bishop further. That would have to go back there to g3. And then I can think about Fianchetto, my light square bishop, castle queenside. And then, because my king would be defending my bishop on b7, I've then got ideas of moving my knight out of the way with a discovered attack. Okay, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to keep the pressure on. I'm expecting my opponent to play there. This pawn is still pinned, so the pawn can't do anything until he castles. So if bishop there... Hello. Okay, so I recapture. Knight recaptures. He's then got three pieces looking at f7. I have currently two pieces defending it. Oh, that was a. <laughs> I did this exact same thing in my last game as well. Uh, oh dear. Yeah. So while I was drawing on the board and pointing on the board, I've inadvertently moved a piece. Okay, well, the ball is in my opponent's court now. I'm expecting him to capture on f6, and that is simply going to win my queen. <sighs> because my queen will be pinned. And that bishop's defended, so I'm going to have to capture, capture, and see where we go.
This may be one to abandon. Okay, he's moved out of the way. He has moved out of the way. Okay. I don't know why didn't you just capture there. That 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 wins the queen hands hands down. It's an absolute pin. Okay, maybe it's nerves. We'll see. Okay, I now have knight takes e5. I can remove the defender of that square from the bishop. Then if bishop captures, I can recapture with the queen and I don't lose my queen. Are there any other candidate moves? So I take with the knight. If he takes with the knight. I can capture with the... No, I can't, can I? Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes with check, queen takes, and I can't recapture with a pawn because the pawn would be pinned to my king. Right. Does this save my queen? Knight takes. If queen takes, we simply exchange queens, and you know I'm, I'm going to lose probably a rook at some point with a fork there. Uh, I can't initiate with a queen because knight will just capture. Right, knight takes. Knight takes. I can move my king at least out of the way at that point. And I, I am going to lose a gonna lose a rook, I think, but we'll see. Let's see if this can be recovered. There are always times in games where you're playing somebody maybe a lot weaker and you are forced to, you know, you might make a blunder and you're forced to dig deep and try and uh, retrieve a lost position. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, and also notice my rook's hanging. This is a pretty terrible position. However, I do have, if he, if he takes the rook, I've got knight takes bishop with a discovered check. And that could be interesting. Okay, he's taken with a knight. That's fair enough. Um, so what's the threat? Uh, bishop takes f6 is now not a threat. My rook is hanging, so my first thought is c6. Put the pressure on his queen. Uh, I don't really have a convincing check there with uh, the bishop taking on f2, because he'll just recapture. He does have knight to here with a fork. That would drop the rook, but I'm expecting to drop the rook. Okay, I'm gonna play this. Hang on, if knight takes now, I can't recapture with a pawn, and that is actually a fork on the king and the queen, so. Right, 1100 rated player. Let's see if you can spot, no, no, I'm okay. Knight can't recapture, because the knight is pinned. This pin is still working. Frantic, desperate times. I'm down a knight already. His queen is under attack. All right. Okay, now let's think. Bishop takes f6 is no threat. Queen can recapture. Good. I'm thinking bishop b7 and try and castle. He might have ideas now of, <clears throat> say, check. I moved e8. He's forced to exchange queens. And once I recapture, he gets my rook. Hmm. Here's a thought. Bishop takes f2 check, threatens to capture this. So I'm thinking if bishop takes f2 check, he's forced to recapture there. And then I can capture the knight. But is there anything to stop me from capturing the knight right now? I capture the knight. Yeah, there is. Okay, because queen takes, I can't recapture because of this pin. Ah! So let's try and do that. Let's try and deflect this bishop from this diagonal, which is so deadly and dangerous. You know what? If I can rescue this game, I'll be quite happy. Okay, he's decided to take back with the king. 
which I think is unusual because it allows me to get my queen out of the pin and that is critical. So I can put my queen to c5 with check and now he's got two options. He can move the king somewhere or he can block with the queen on one of these two squares. The queen is protecting the bishop, the queen is protecting the knight. This bishop is undefended. That's not, re not really a, a strength at this point. I've got potentially rook e8. I've got king c7 trying to just run away to safety with the king. If the king moves, then it breaks this pin, so then the pawn would be able to capture the knight. So that actually puts the knight on pre. It's not currently on pre because the piece that would capture it is in an absolute pin against the king. White is up two minor pieces at this time. Okay, king e2. Okay, ideas, candidate moves. King c7 to run away. Rook e8 lines up against both the king and the queen and this knight. Okay, so effectively means, so let's say I do rook there, knight to here, king runs away, leaves the rook undefended. Okay, so that's not, that's not really an option. I can't, no, I can't move that pawn. The pawn is pinned. All right. So I'm thinking right now, move the king, somehow move the bishop to connect my rooks. And then at least I've got an option of taking advantage of this pin. Um, queen takes knight. Doesn't work because queen takes, I can't recapture. Okay. I'm forced to run away. <clears throat> This is an extremely unpleasant situation. If the bishop takes the pawn, then I'm quite happy because my rook can come in. Then I can move this. And uh, the knight is pinned against both the queen and the king. The queen is currently busy defending two pieces, three pieces really. Can we pull this one out of the bag? We just don't know. Maybe d6 would be a better option. I don't really want to block off my bishop there. I've got few enough pieces on the board as it is. Um, so I need this bishop to get active. So I think that d6 or even d5, I mean d5 comes with a fork. Might be worth checking that one out. Is that one uh, a possibility? Try and recover one of my minor pieces that I've lost. I think I have to get some some kind of badge if I uh, manage to recover this game. But you know what? It's a, it's a it's a challenge in itself. Um, winning a game from a winning position can be quite the challenge. Okay. Unusual choice of move. All right, let's think. We've got candidate moves, d5 with a fork, which I quite like. The knight is also defending that. I've got pawn takes knight. Queen can't recapture because queen takes. I've got queen takes knight. Queen takes, pawn takes. Okay, so I've got opportunities here to win one minor piece at least. I would love to be in a position to win two. Now, if pawn takes knight, queen takes, it comes with check. So I have to recapture, pretty much. If queen takes, same deal. We're going to exchange queens. We'll be in an ending. And I'm going to be one bishop against two. So I'll definitely be on the back foot. 
Is there an idea of rook h to e8 at this point? Lots of, lots of possibilities. Lots of possibilities. <clears throat> if rook h to e, rook to e8, okay, let's think this through. Then we've got bishop takes f6. I take that, bishop can just take, so I'm just giving up material there. So it's really a choice between taking the knight or going for the fork with d5. Taking the knight now would probably result in an exchange of queens. If I play this one first, his queen is going to move. Then I can take the knight. Is there any risk with playing d5 now? Um, I mean, he's got queen takes c6. Is that pawns defending c6? So if, if, I, if I play that pawn first, queen takes c6, queen takes, knight takes, king takes. Then he gets a pawn and a queen for a knight and a queen. And I'm not in huge danger at that point. Hang on, if I play that now, the queen will have to move. Where's the queen going to move? Let's find out. The best moves, possibly, queen to d4. Then if we exchange, he undoubles his pawns, which will be very good for him in the end ending. Um, I don't really want that to happen. So I might end up bringing my queen back to e7 if that. Um, or I could just grab the bishop and then allow the exchange of queens, um, which means that I've got double pawns. This piece is on pre, but then so is his queen. So he's going to have to do something with his queen. No question. He could capture with a bishop. I recapture. That would be okay. I really don't know what he's going to do for his next move. F5 is another move, defended by the bishop. At this point in the game, you do need to be thinking about pawns because one extra pawn could make all the difference to winning or losing. I'm also interested in, again, still connecting my rooks, getting a rook onto e8, make the use of this the fact that his king and his queen are in line with each other, which I think is possibly an error. I'm hoping it's going to be an error that is material come the end of the game. Let's see what he's going to do. So if the queen moves off of the e-file, I may have Rook to e8, meaning the knight is still completely pinned. But then if bishop takes, the bishop's defending the knight. That's not good. Queen's still got to... Well, no, knight, knight is defending that as well. The queen's also defending... Ah, oh, he's gone for that one. Okay. Okay, right. So, we're getting some material. If I capture the knight, queen can recapture with check. King can run away. That's not too bad. If I capture with the pawn, the queen doesn't have an immediate threat. Can't can't go there. So let's think. Let's I recapture the pawn. The queen can't go there because of the rook. There because of the pawn. There because of the bishop can't stay where it is because the pawn will be on there, so it can't go there. Yeah, I think that's it. So the queen is going to have a choice of a few squares, but either way, the knight will fall. Because now the white has two pieces on pre. Okay, so... <clears throat> 
let's think. We've got... I'm now in a position to recapture that second minor piece, okay? The question is, do I want to exchange queens first? If I capture the knight now, white can recapture, winning a pawn with check, forcing my king to run away, okay? So I'm thinking exchange now, force the king to take, then we take the knight back, then my rook can come across, okay? Take the knight, material is now equal, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time to assess the ending. Okay, first things first, pawn structures. You've got a two, doubled and isolated, that's basically a one, right? So you've got a two, a one, and another one. And they are spread out across the board, okay? This favors bishops. What's the purpose of that move, rook h2, f1? Let's have a think. I know I want to connect my rooks. I'm thinking bishop to a6 at this time would be interesting. Um, so white's basically got a 2, a 1, and a 1 in pawns. I've got a 2, a 2, and a 1, and I've got this nice control over the center right now. So I, I want to make sure these pawns are pretty safe. Um, we've both got fairly active kings. I'm thinking, so it's going to be either b7, bishop to b7, or bishop to a6. Bishop to a6 would attack the rook, forcing this rook to move again. And where's it going to move to? If it comes here, I just push a pawn, or even actually bring my king in. Uh, that's then inviting a check from the rook. If bishop to b7, at least it's defending my pawn, which may become the rear pawn if that one pushes, you see. It's also in line with a currently undefended pawn on g2. So I'm leaning towards bishop b7 for those reasons. Because this diagonal has pieces on it. It's defending my pawn. I've also got options now of like pawn d4 with check with a discovered attack on that one there. Okay, I have to defend the bishop, which means I have to come back to here. There's no other option. This pawn's protected, this pawn's protected by the rook. Okay, so they, those are okay. It's these central pawns that I need to be more concerned with. All right, so this, this won't work for white. He can't go onto the back rank as I take. Then if he recaptures, I capture again, okay? So he loses that because he's basically offering up the first piece to be taken. <clears throat> Both his rooks are on what, uh, light squares right now. There's no real benefit to that because one of his rooks is gonna come in. Maybe that's actually his idea is to put the rook on the sixth rank. Yeah, that's his idea, isn't it? Rook to the sixth rank which would force my king to c5, leaving my bishop open, so I'm gonna to have to play rook a to b8 to defend the bishop. Now if he goes ahead with this move, I can safely play king there. All right, so he's decided to attack. Okay, it's a double attack, he's, he's, it's a fork. It's a bishop fork. He's forking my rook and my uh, pawn on e5. I need to protect that pawn, so I'm going to have to move that across. This does lose, drops a pawn. I may end up moving my bishop there. I also have ideas of coming in, charging in with the king. There's loads of time still on the clock. My opponent has 45 minutes, I have 40 minutes still. But this is a game really worth fighting to win. That's interesting. Okay, here's an idea. 
Pawn d4, pawn takes, pawn takes, discovered check. So the king will have to move to one of these two squares in order to defend um, the rook. Now, that also messes up my nice pawn centre and undoubles his pawns for him. So is that doing my opponent a favour? He's also neglected to capture this loose pawn right now. Also, you know, their pawn takes, pawn takes, at some point he's got bishop retakes. So again, that's less than ideal. I feel like I need to reposition this bishop, but if I, if I move the bishop then also my pawn on a7 is vulnerable as well as my pawn on h7. There's a possible attack here. I could think about doubling up my rooks on the e-file. So let's try that because now that, that prevents rook takes h7 because of rook takes uh, the bishop. The king is currently defending this bishop and the fact that I've got my rook now on the same rank as the king is giving my king a little bit of protection on that score too. Okay, the bishop's moved out, moved out of the way. I'm just going to play h6. It's an instinctive response. Bishop can't capture. Bishop's going to have to move again. Can't come back to here. Can't come to here. Can't come there. So the bishop's going to go to either e7 or h4. If e7, that invites rook b to e8. Okay, this bishop has now become less of a threat. I'd imagine it's going to want to come to g3 at some point, put pressure on this pawn. Do I want to play a5 and protect my pawn, or do I want to play my b rook across to e8? I think I'm going to protect the pawn now. That's my instinct. So this was supposed to be a video in how to beat somebody uh, rated 1100. It's turning out to be a video in how to rescue a an almost lost position. At least I've managed to recover material. Okay, that's a, that's an odd one because <clears throat> there's two ideas. I've got two two interesting checks. Okay, I've got e4 and I've got bishop a6. If bishop a6, let's figure these out. He can't push can't push the pawn down because bishop takes. Right, that's not an option. He can't come to any of these squares or stay there or go there or go there. So the king's got two options. It also takes my bishop out of the line of fire of the rook. It also uh, <clears throat> gives me the option of putting my bishop on c4, where it's blocking both the progress of both of these pawns, which is a good thing. So I kind of like that move. So that's candidate move number one. Candidate move number two is e4 check. But that invites the king just to come in, back into the center of the board. I don't want to allow that. I'm going for this, this move. You see the importance, the absolutely critical importance of first establishing your candidate moves and then evaluating the likely outcome of each of those moves. And then you select which outcome is the, is the preferable one for you. Right? Far too many people, even playing longer time controls, just play the first move that comes into your head the natural looking move, the instinctive move. Um, if there's a capture, you just capture. If they capture, you just recapture. It's, it's just kind of reactive. But um, that isn't always the right way to play. Okay, so now, right now, all of my pieces are defended on the board, apart from the rooks. The rooks are very often undefended, but that don't really count. Um, 
So, one thought is bishop to c4, blocking up these two guys, and also covering this corner a little bit. You know, his king may have ideas of running away into that corner, in which case I might want to come charging through. Another option is rook b to e8. Does this pawn need to be over defended? Okay, he's got. Uh, rook to f5 with the second attacker on there. I can always move my king, not not to there. I can always make, move my king to d6 at some point, or my rook across. This leaves my rooks on light-coloured squares, which is great because uh, he's he's only got a dark-squared bishop. I've got a light-squared bishop. So do we have a preference? I kind of like this move. I've actually, I'm, yeah, I've got this kind of passed pawn potentially on the E file. He's got one potential passed pawn on the G file. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do this one now. I don't see any real danger in that. Also, potential ideas now of some kind of discovery against that fellow. So, let's say, how would that work? Might have to... Okay, that's a second attacker. Okay, that pawn is pinned against my rook. Didn't spot that one, did I? Okay, so now rook to e8. Bishop can't take, nor can the rook, because I've got two defenders. Okay. And I've got ideas now of doing something with this pawn. And then maybe like a, a rook exchange or something and, and grab both rooks and put myself in a winning position if that's possible. If it is, it will be a famous win. Yeah, winning a winning position is sometimes harder than you think. It's easy to get carried away. It's easy to get drawn into thinking I need to finish this guy off quickly. Um, it's easy sometimes to, to lower your guard when that's happening and to fall into a surprise checkmate, which is very embarrassing and hurtful. Another thing I, I should be thinking about at this point in the game is, I've got a light square bishop, white's got a dark square bishop. If I can try and keep all of my pieces on light squares, that means that my bishop is able to defend my pieces, but black's, uh, sorry, my opponent's dark square bishop Although it can zip all around the board, it can't actually attack anything. So that would be a good idea in general. So maybe something like, you know, like a rook to g6 is on a light square. Push this pawn forward. I'm attacking, you know, this is definitely a weak pawn. I think g2 is weak. Still got ideas of a surprise attack there. Say so the king ever moves. Move my rook out of the way and then pawn up with check wins a, wins a rook. Ideas like that. If you can come with another kind of forcing move as well, that would be even better. But I think on balance, I am in slightly the stronger position at this point f for the sole reason of those two doubled and isolated pawns on the C file. All right. Okay, so idea number one. Pushes pawn, takes, takes. We can have an exchange of rooks. That doesn't concern me too much. I think that the, the strength of this, or the weakness of that for white, means that exchanging pieces at this point in time doesn't really hurt me. Pushing a pawn as well puts it on a light square, puts it out of range of that bishop. Do I need to be concerned about this rook coming across? No, because my, my king can take it. Um, pushing this pawn gives me ideas of the surprise attack on the rook. Or, here's another one. Rook g6. Okay, this, this pawn here 
isn't really under too much threat right now. So if I do that, that's that's a sleight of hand. So I'm pretending that I'm going to attack G2, but in reality, I'm looking for a surprise attack there. Um, is there any problem with removing the defender? Because I've got two defenders on that pawn. Now let's go for this move. Right now, if I can take that, then that pins the bishop against the king. So I don't think he's going to want me to do that. The next question is, will I push d4 on the next move? Let's say we have g3. Okay, we have g3. I'm not sure that this is very advantageous. Pushing that and he spots the discovered attack and he simply moves his rook, okay? Then what have I got? I've, I've now moved both of my central pawns, which are now one on a dark square, one on a light square, they'll both be on dark squares. I can go ahead and capture on c3, but I don't think, I think these pawns are too good. I don't want to be swapping either of these pawns for his stuck pawns on the c file at this point in time. So what I think I want to do is I want to play another move and I want to keep this discovered attack in my pocket in case um, my opponent slips up and moves into range. So let's say, for sake of argument, king e3, then this is deadly because d4 comes with check and I, I win the rook. Okay. So I'm thinking maybe doubling up my rooks on the sixth rank. Let's go for that. Oh, of course there's a downside. I've just blocked off the attack myself. I've unpinned the, uh, the rook, so to speak. Okay, and he's moved out of range anyway, so. I think possibly he's coming over here where he's going to have then two pieces attacking that. So I'm thinking now king to c7 prevents rook b8. Yep. Yeah. I also actually have a, f a fork here. I could have forked his rook and bishop, threatening to capture his bishop. Uh, that's now not an option. He can't capture on, on that. That pawn is actually safe right now, so I'm not too worried. <sighs> this pawn's definitely a target, but it's not easy for my bishop to attack. It'd have to come all the way around to here. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, because if c4, I can just go back and grab it. So let's think about maneuvering my bishop round to, to here to attack a4. It also covers the c8 square. Okay, two attackers, two defenders. I'm not too concerned. I'm going to... to... Right. If, unless there's something better, I'm going to carry on with this plan. What that may do is actually prompt him to play rook a1. And if he plays rook a1, it's going to leave one of his most powerful pieces on the board tied down to the defence of a lowly pawn. And that's a good thing for me. Okay. This is okay. Bishop can't take, it just gets taken. Rook takes, rook takes, that's okay. Okay, so we're going to carry on with this plan. <laughs> Maneuver the bishop round to attack the... Okay, I think that blunders a piece. I'm now ahead of material. Rook takes, rook takes. He does get a pawn for his trouble. But he's going to be suffering because he's going to be down a whole bishop. He'll be up a pawn but down a bishop and he's still got these horrible double pawns here. The bishop will come to c6. It's defending this. It's attacking that. Um, I think that may have been the decisive error. If this rook moves anywhere else, I've even got captures on h2 with check. Right, recapture, that's a no-brainer. He's going to grab the pawn, I'll grab that with check. And now things are going to start to get real. 
All right. So I'm up a bishop. My opponent has an extra pawn. I'm thinking king d6 looks like a no-brainer. Actually, that pawn is defended. That pawn is defended right now. I don't really... I'm not forced to do anything. However, that also comes with an attack on the rook. And kings versus rooks in close quarters actually favours the king. The king can move in any direction. The rook is limited in its range of movement. Okay, he's come back to defend the pawn, which is what I expected. The king... So let's say I move the rook to g2. The king's going to be tied to the defence of that. The rook's going to be tied to the defence of the g-pawn. My bishop can come around and start playing merry hell. Right, let's do it. Let's keep the pressure on. Let's see if we can rescue this. That's not a problem for me. Now, bishop's going to come to c6, where it's actually looking at both of these. King's defending that pawn. King's defending that pawn. <sighs> for the first time, I'm starting to feel confident. All thanks to a blunder by my opponent. Okay, so he's... He's worried about this, but if I play that, the, he's going to have to move to here. It's the only square that defends both of those. So let's do it. Let's keep the pressure on. He's going to be in a situation then when he really just doesn't want to move anything. His rook could shuffle up and down the g-file... But his king is then oh, interesting, very interesting. Okay, I was really expecting a uh, king to be three, where it defended both of these pawns. He's not done that, which allows my bishop to come and grab a four, and then if if check, bishop just comes back. So the other issue is, of course, we now have two pieces attacking c two. Okay, now what do I do? <clears throat> If I dodge my king out of the way, I've still got this threat. Rook takes c2. Um, if I put my king there, the rook can't come in anywhere. It can't come to there, there, or there. It does leave this pawn undefended temporarily, but I'm up in material. I'm actually up a whole bishop. The Alternative is to block with there. Also, this pawn is undefended. So he's got, he's got he's got problems. He's got a range of problems now. So king there. If he tries to attack the pawn, I've got this check. Let's do that. Let's do that. I've always got king back to here and then bishop to there. Okay. Now I've got a check. No, the rook is defended. He can't go there. He can't go there. All right. So that was the worst move because it comes with, allows me to do another check, renewing my attack on that pawn. So what's he got? He's got to move back. Okay, this is now a winning position, and my job is to convert. I can't go there for the reason that rook attacks king, king has to move, and then this rook would fall, so that would be a, a blunder. If I take the pawn, my opponent takes king here. I don't want to end up in a situation with like a perpetual check or anything like that either. But let's say let's say my, my king ends up here. Uh, his rook comes across. My king goes back to there. He's It's going to take him like three moves to deliver check. So I think I'm alright. Um, I think this pawn is, is more of a threat. I mean, th that's really his only way, of, his only chance of winning the game is to queen that pawn. So should I take that out of the equation right now? Yes. Okay, he's going to capture on d5. 
I'm going to dodge out of the way. I could even come in close to my opponent, right? Krav Maga style. I'm going to do that. The rooks don't like that. They don't like you getting up in their face because they, they're not good at close quarter combat. So now my strategy for winning the game is to exchange rooks. Okay, he's attacking that. Does b5 make any sense at all? Not really. Does that check make any sense at all? If I do that, then king can't go there or there, and certainly can't go there. So he's going to have three squares to go to. That's all right. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. Because I can always drop back now to b4 and try and prompt the exchange of rooks. If I get the exchange of rooks, even without the bishop, I should be all right. So I'm going to put the question to white. He'd be a fool to exchange. It is possible to win a game. If he can capture all of my pieces, it's possible to win a game with a rook and a king against the, another king. Okay. Does he want to check me? What does he want to do? Hmm. Protected, protected, protected. These three are now in a protective triangle. So my king can actually go a wandering if it wants to. Oh, okay. Second mouse slip. Got to stop doing this. That's all right. Again, come in close. Get right up in that rook's face. Say, come on then. Boom, boom, boom. See, the rook can't go here. It can't go here. It can't check from that position because I'll just capture it. Okay, blunder. Right, before we do that, if bishop takes rook, I've got to make sure that this king isn't in stalemate. And it isn't. It's got two squares it can go to. Okay. I think now just a king and rook checkmate will be the easiest option. Let's keep it simple. Okay, king has got two squares. I'm going to bring my bishop round. Don't have to rush this. What I want is I want my, my king and his king two squares apart, in line, like that, and so now I've got to be very careful. That would be stalemate, okay, because currently that's the only square he's got to go to. So whatever I do, I must not cover that square. Now, if king to c2, king has to go there, then I think rook there is checkmate. He can't go there. He's only got one square. And this is the classic king and rook checkmating pattern. You want to be in opposition with the king, which means that you are two squares apart and in line. Their king's on the back on the uh, side of the board. And that's checkmate. Well, guys, that wasn't the game that I intended it to be. Um, but I'm very, very relieved that I managed to, to pull it off. If you've sat through this whole painful episode, then congratulations to you. You have the resilience and the grit and the patience that it takes to be a chess master one day. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea because I need a, a break now. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.